Now let's recap a little bit from what we were talking about on Sunday. We were meddling a little bit, but you know, it's all good. We go in seasons. Have you, have you ever had times where uh, as parents, or maybe your parents, you just had times where you had to call a little bit of a family meeting and just address some things, uh, just to keep order in the house, and, and because you love your children, and you, and you want them to grow up uh, learning uh, what proper order is in the home. Uh, you, don't, you don't pull Susie's pigtails, you know, you don't uh, when I ask you to take out the trash, you take out the trash and you do it the way I ask you to do it, right? So yeah, with joy, right? So sometimes we address things and we don't bring people's names out or that's not our heart or anything. Sometimes if, if I feel like something could be, have been heard publicly and it possibly could uh, hinder somebody they don't quite understand, then we might address that. But you know what? If they didn't hear you say it or they didn't see it on the Facebook, nobody's gonna know. So it'd be best if you didn't put it on the Facebook or didn't say it to somebody. And if you did, that's not my fault. <laughs> if you did, just, you know, stop pulling Susie's pigtails, okay? We can, we can do it better. We can handle it in a better way. Amen. So anyway, that's all good. Uh, let's go very quickly to... It's a little bit hot in here. Is it just me? Just a little bit hot. And Matt's like, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So we're not aiming for anybody. And, you know, my heart is to take my correction. And just like Pastor Nancy's son, Grant, uh, says, Mama, thank you for keeping me straight. <laughs> so sometimes we just kind of say, thank you. Thank you, pastors, for help keeping me straight. And um, we're not aiming for anybody. I need correction. My husband gives me correction, okay? Sometimes I give him some correction. <laughs> it's just part of life, and it's just part of family, and just being orderly. Amen. So in Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12. <laughs> Apologize, we're getting there. I'm waiting for my iPad to get there. So I'm, there, there she blows. Okay. So let's start out in verse 1, Hebrews 12, verse 1. You got a house and you got a couple hundred people in it. Sometimes you have to dress things, but that's all right. It's because we love people. And uh, really, I have to dress things myself, and I, I give things to, to God continually and say, Lord, I want to do better in this, and so on and so forth. Um, I love the fact that Pastor Nancy is bold and straight in her teaching and preaching uh, because she's, she's, save, she's saving us from hurt and harm and, and teaching us how to be respectful and honorable in God's word and, and doing his word. So it's all, it's all good. We don't, we don't go to bed thinking about you every night. I just wanted to let you know that. So, in a good way that I pray for you. I just mean, I'm, I don't sit, sit there and worry about, you know, if somebody's doing wrong or not, okay? I, I, okay, I got better things to do, all right? So Hebrews chapter 12 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which so easily. So we know that, that all weights aren't sins, but it will turn into a sin if we don't get it right. If we keep getting distracted by something and God's dealing with us about that, and we've all been there and done that, uh, then it eventually will become sin because we're putting it before God's word. Or that thing becomes a passion to us before God's word, right? So uh, it says, and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we talked about on Sunday, when it says looking unto Jesus, it's really, it's talking about uh, what we've read so many times in Proverbs 4, 20, attend to my words. 
incline your ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for their life to you as you find them. And what? Health. Health to all your flesh. What have we been talking about? What did we start talking about on, on Sunday? We have a healing covenant. Yes. But it's just, it, it, it works in our life as we have an assurance of faith. As we trust God and really we come to him and ask in Jesus' name or we just claim it in yeah. Jesus' name because what was provided on the cross uh, through uh, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is ours yeah. already. So just like if somebody left you a house or maybe you own a house now, you don't have to go to the, the bank and beg for, it, beg for it. It is already yours. What do you need? I just need a key to get in. Did you know that you're already righteous? Did you know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and you are the healed of the Lord? Well, that's news to me, Pastor Debbie. Uh, no, I, you, you all know that. You've heard this well enough. I don't think there's anybody in here that's uh, so no, new that they, they don't know that we've talked about you are healed. Yeah. You are prospered. You are already forgiven, but how many know we have to come by faith? In other words, our faith in Jesus' name is the key that unlocks the door to all the blessings of our righteousness. Yeah. And we are righteous, but we've got to have righteous acts with it. And really, righteous acts are sanctification, holiness. That righteousness that's in us already coming on the outside. Why? Because we're using it. And when we say we're using it, we mean we're using our faith to unlock the door to the blessings of God, to all of our redemptive blessings. So what do you need tonight? If you're not assured that either healing is yours or that you can walk in healing even if it is yours if you're not assured let's get to the scriptures let's look at them what area in your life what is the devil using to hit you over the head to tell you that you can't have healing I mean you're already healed but, but what's he saying to you what is that condemnation saying to you because it's contrary to what my Bible says and you can have assurance in Jesus' name as long as you are doing the right things. We are righteous, but how many know our faith won't work to unlock the door to all the blessings of that, of that righteousness if we are not walking in love, if we are not believing? And those are the two things that we talked about there in 1 John chapter 3. So we'll... we'll uh, go back to that here in a minute but but let's go ahead and read this let's go ahead and read this so uh it says let us run with the endurance the race so i just like to get uh, get a picture i just we want to draw a picture of who we are in christ and our redemptive rights in him and i think that kind of helps us to understand the scenario of we are the owners of a home and you go in that home because you own it. And you can use anything in that home because it's your home, it's your belongings in that home. We are righteous. Just like we own a home, we own righteousness. We are healed, we own, we're, we're the owners. We have the DNA of our Father, which is righteousness in Christ. We've been made new creatures in Christ. Healing was uh, provided for us. Prosperity was provided for us. Forgiveness was provided for, for us. So we don't have to experience the curse of the law that they did in the Old Testament. Now, they, uh, they brought bull, the, the blood of bulls and goats and all that. I, I really don't get back into all that stuff, you know, but it was by blood sacrifice. But Jesus, through his blood sacrifice, through his bruised body, now we are healed. Amen. See, he was the great substitutionary. And we are healed. We are whole. We are righteous. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Just like that house is mine. I'm righteous. You can't, you can't take it from me. You, you can't. It's in my name. But sometimes we lock ourselves out. Have you ever locked yourself out? 
you remember the story where I got up in the middle of the night and I was doing some painting. I was ministering the next day because Pastor Jay was out of town. I was, I was painting some doors. You know, I, I oftentimes, we were at the Coralville. We, we live in Central City. And I often, I had some doors and I was painting them. So it's like 11 o'clock at night and I was giving them, you know, a coat. And the door, somebody had uh, locked the door. I'm not sure if it was me or someone else, but anyway. And I, I always... So when I shut it, I didn't know it was locked. It's, it's one of those doors that can stay locked, but you can come out. Anyway, moving right along. Somehow, it got locked. I think maybe I locked it because I was there by myself. That's possible. That's possible. <laughs> but I never locked that door, and I didn't have a key out there. So here I am at 11 o'clock at night. I'm supposed to minister the next day, just give, give, giving a quick coat of paint on these doors, because you have to do it like every couple hours, right? And uh, here I am in my PJs, right? I mean, and, and it, it, anyway, it wasn't something that you wear out in front of somebody. So here I am in my PJs, and I, I can't get back in. So I got the screwdriver, and I got, you know, the saw and everything else, and not the saw, but <laughs> I mean... I, <laughs> Todd, remember, where's Todd at? Do you remember what that looked like? Okay. He, he had to get a new door because it was so bad. I mean, I did everything to get into that door. Well, I, there, there was this old dusty blanket, so I put it around me, and I w walked a couple houses up the street, and I saw somebody's lights on. I'm like, oh, please let it be a woman. So I <laughs> knocked on the door, and sure enough, um, I was kind of looking in there a little bit, so like, you know, not trying to, uh, to anyway... <laughs> Um, I don't know, they thought this crazy lady looking through the door, but hey, I, and it was a, a lady and her daughter, and I guess they were up watching a movie, and they're like, hello, can we help you? Well, could I use your cell phone? <laughs> so we found somebody that had a key, and they came, and so I locked myself out. I couldn't benefit yeah. from anything in the house. Yeah. Nothing, nada. Yeah. Only the garage. I was limited. How many know that we've got a threefold redemption? Really, in salvation, we have been free from destruction in general. So if we're, if we're going to a church and we're just hearing about one part of our redemption, then really we're limited to the garage. <laughs> we can't, you know, I can only partake of what's in the garage. I want what's in the bedroom. Like, I want to go to bed because I got to get up tomorrow. So, anyway, that's what we have in Christ. All the tools that we need to benefit and prosper. And we are the righteousness of God, but that righteousness becomes righteous acts through our words, through our actions, through taking God's word and applying it in our life. Amen? Amen. All right. So, in verse 3, let's go down to, to verse 3. For consider... So we're in Hebrews chapter 12. We took a little bit of time with that, but I think that helps paint a picture and helps us understand not to limit ourselves and to use Jesus' name through asking the Father or just claiming in Jesus' name, speaking to the mountain, and it will be removed. Now verse 3, For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. And many times, weariness and discouragement, and really discouragement, uh, I'm going to get the definition of that because it's very interesting, that word. It means to relax or faint, be exhausted. To have one strength relaxed, weakened, despondent, to be tired out, faint-hearted. And what did we say uh, in 1 Corinthians 11 there, you know, the communion, and, and Paul said, hey, when you're not treating others in the body of Christ, when you're not discerning the body because they were eating without certain people, and the scenario there was, I believe, they, uh, some of them had food and some of them didn't, and they, some, the ones that had food, they, they were just eating without others, and Paul's saying, that's not right. Y'all share, okay? It's a sad thing that you got to tell the church, share your food. Now, that doesn't mean you got to invite everybody and their mother over to your home and share all your food. We're, they were meeting at the church, and they should have, they were breaking bread and, and uh, celebrating the communion, but, but not everybody was getting it because some weren't, uh, they didn't have food. 
And they were telling them, uh, don't do that, because if, if you're not discerning those in the body, you can open the door to the devil and become what? Weak, sickly, and then possibly you can die prematurely. So we need to discern those in the body of Christ. And uh, so when we allow weariness to get in, when we become exhausted, uh, that type of thing, really many times we get weak from speaking our faith. Uh, Symptoms in our body. Have you been there, done that? You are the healed of the Lord. There's nothing that the enemy can do to take you out early unless you have opened the door to him. Now, sickness and disease sometimes just comes on people, like uh, Pastor Jay said, because we're in the cage with the lion, which is, you know, the devil. And he can attack us because he, he's trying uh, to find those whom he may devour. Well, he may not devour you if you're assured in your heart and you're using that assurance or that faith and speaking what you believe and walking righteously. What do you mean walking righteously? We know the commandment of love is to believe on the name of Jesus and to walk in love. The commandment is to believe on Jesus and to walk in love. That's what I meant to say. The New Testament commandment. If we're not walking in love with our Heavenly Father, if we're not walking in love with ourselves, if we're not walking in love with our brothers and sisters, uh, then it's going to catch up to us, right? And it can open the door, and therefore our faith is not properly unlocking the door and the righteousness inside. We're not benefiting from that. And we need to benefit from that. So we need to be right. Yes. Through what? Actions. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you've not yet resisted to bloodshed. There in verse 4. Striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. So if you're a son. Just like a mom and dad in a home. There's sometimes going to be correcting times. Yes. And I think it's a better thing to do if we just daily will hold ourselves and say, Lord, correct me through your word and by the Spirit just get things right ourselves. And therefore, when we get to church, we're not taking out our unrighteousness on others. (laughs) Amen. And we're going to be walking in love. We're going to be a blessing. Why? Because we are dealing with these things at home. And, And we're applying it at home and we're applying it at our work and we're applying it wherever we are and therefore we're not slipping up and treating others wrong it says my son do not despise the chastening of the Lord or the correction of the Lord nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him for whom the Lord loves he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect, as we should, right? Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of Spirits and live? And uh, I'll say this, shall we not uh, be in subjection to the orders of the house of the local church? For they indeed for a few days chasten does as seem best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. And that's, that's sanctification. In other words, that's righteous acts. Now, no chastening seems to be joy, joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So we know we're righteous in Christ, but what it's saying, the fruit of righteousness is righteous acts. And it's really growing in the fruit of the human spirit, which is love and joy and being kind and being gentle and and having, you know, patience, right? Amen. Amen. In verse 12, therefore strengthen the hands which hang down in the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people 
it's interesting that Paul's telling them, you know, one of the things that you're really going to have to watch is pursuing peace. Now, when it says uh, make straight paths, uh, dislocated actually is what we wanted to look at. That means it can be turned out of the way. So there's things in our lives that can be turned the wrong way, and we've got to turn it towards God's way. I mean, you've got a foot that's kind of this way. You need it turned back to where it's supposed to be, right? And we can get dislocated. We can become lame. We can, you know, our paths are, are not following the, the, the order of God's word. So we've got to make the changes. And really, if we do that at home or we just do that on a daily basis and say, okay, Lord, uh, I know you're talking to me about that and, and I, I need to apply that. And thank you for the grace of the Spirit of God that helps me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You work in me both to will and to do of your good pleasure. And we've all missed it, right? But our heart is to do right. And one of the things that we have to keep uh, before us consistently is this world's way tries to take advantage of people. And this world's way doesn't think about other people around them. It's just, I'll do whatever I can to get ahead. Uh, you know, you know, I'll lie and I'll cheat. Just and and it's it's amazing some of these uh, programs you would watch. I mean, it's been so long since I've watched that type of stuff. But they'll talk about uh, somebody who grows in business or what have you. But to get there, they lie and they cheat and they. That's not what we're about. No, because we're trusting God. And when we put God first, we're going to love his people. And, and we're going to love people, and we're not going to, you know, step on people to get higher or to get more money in life. We're just not going to do that. Why? Because we trust God. Yeah, but I got fired because so-and-so got, got my job. Well, praise the Lord. Pray for them. And, and just tell your boss, well, you know what? If they can do a better job than me, I'll just pray for you. You know, praise the Lord. Thank you for everything you have done for me. That's what I'm supposed to say? Yeah. That's God's way. And we just bless them. And then if there's, and, and frankly, I would ask my boss, if, there, if there's anything that I haven't done right, can you just share with me? Because I want to do a better job. And you, you pray and say, God, is there anything I can change? So maybe you lost your job because you didn't do something right, or maybe you lost your job because you were doing something right, but they just gave it to somebody else. The, the biggest thing is just go to God and ask him. And ask your boss, is there anything I need to make a change in, or is, can I do better in an area? And you know what? This is a novel idea, <laughs> and we've all had to work on it. Okay, I understand that. But when we show up early, and when we give extra time, and sometimes you're, you're not leaving at five minutes before the clock, you, you know, you're staying five or ten minutes after when everybody else is leaving. Well, bless God, I, he only asked me to work till 4.30. I understand that. But we give because we have hearts to give. And so you're not, the Christian is just doing above and beyond. We're doing things right. It's called righteous acts. It's called that righteousness on the inside because people are watching us. And I've said, Lord, you know, I can do better in these things. Have you been there, done that? I can do better. I can do better in my example. I can be, that, that, is, that means a lot to me to be the right example, right? So we were talking about being the right example. I'm getting ahead of myself uh, maybe a little bit, but I'm taking a long time, so I'm just going to say it. We were talking about not bringing injury to others in the body of Christ by pulling them out of the local church. We were talking about not speaking against uh, the pastors of the local church uh, against the people of the local church you just don't speak against your help you just don't and then expect to prosper if you don't if you don't agree with the pastors and we've said it before uh, well ask the lord what and, and you pray for them and not lord you teach them to do it the way that i believe they should do it no you just say father show me in the word 
Because I, 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 you just might as well be honest. Lord, I just don't agree with that. Well, what does God agree with? What does his word say about it? Maybe it irritates you because the pastor brings up, uh, you know, well, it'd be nice if you came to church. Maybe that's irritating to you. Who do you think you are, my big kahuna? No, I don't think I'm your big kahuna. I'm just trying, you know what? I got to be a steward. And I don't want God to call me a panty waist, okay? If I have to explain what that is, okay, I I won't. We're not going to go there. But uh, I have to answer to the Lord because if I'm not teaching you how to get out of the road before you get hit by a semi, then, then I'm not doing my job. And I'd rather come in here just preach a nice lesson on healing, but there's other things that belong. There's other things that are tied to healing, and one of them is righteous acts. And our assurance. What is affecting our assurance? Many of us grew up, and I'm not, uh, I don't, we, there's so many different scenarios you could go into, but many of us grew up and we weren't disciplined. We didn't always have the proper order. Our homes were sometimes dysfunctional, okay? Like somebody said, everybody's home was dysfunctional. Um, We can learn by those things. Really, if we apply righteous acts, if, if we are looking at God's word and our heart is to be holy, our heart is to be pure before the Lord, our heart is to grow in him, to grow the fruit of the spirit, because inherent in the grace of God in our spirit is love, is joy, is peace, is friendliness, which is part of kindness, is not being offensive or not being a stumbling block that will pull people out of a local church because, you know, we only want to come part of the time, so we want our friends to be with us on the weekends. And I'm not talking about going on vacation or being gone a weekend or a couple of weekends. I, no, I'm just saying consistently pulling people yeah, out. Yeah, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, God's blessed you maybe with a vacation home or something like that. Don't pull other people out yeah. consistently asking them to come and visit and this and that because what happens is it's going to catch up to them yeah. and you're going to have to answer for that. Yeah pastor and I, we have a responsibility to warn people, be careful of someone who's always asking you to go to their place on the weekend and miss church. Be very careful of that. That brings injury to the body of Christ. Why? Because we are supposed to be about putting God first. We are supposed to be about soldiers and in the army of God. We, we are supposed to be about becoming more skilled in our faith. It's not about going and looking at the lake all day. I love the lake. I was sitting on my back porch today. It was a beautiful day out. You know, I don't have a lake yet. We're going there, okay? We're, we're going to have a pond out there sometime. I, I love water, okay? But, uh, and I was enjoying sitting out on my back porch and just kind of basking in the presence of God. And I, I was doing some praying, preparing for the service. And I, I'm enjoying hearing the woodpeckers you know over here and and I'm hearing the squirrels and we we got this groundhog that goes back and you know under the house there I'm just enjoying it sometimes seeing the deer playing out there well what would happen it's like okay I'm really enjoying this I'm going to call somebody else brother Andre you take the service because I'm really enjoying this too much see that's that's going to trip me up And that would be a stumbling block to you all. If I came to church on Sunday and said, you know, I was just enjoying myself outside so much that I I just decided not to come. No, that would trip you up. That would be a stumbling block. So why is it that we feel like we can just invite people to our vacation home on the weekend? Because that's what we're saying. Because, you know, we want to, we just, we want to vacate. All right? Vacation is good. And you say, why do you keep bringing that up? Well, I'll stop bringing it up when it stops happening, okay? All right. Because we've got people in the local church that get affected by that. As a young girl, I had to, uh, I had to take stands and go to church by myself at times. 
I love my family. And uh, I, I love my mama. She's a good, you know, spiritual example. But back at that time, you know, just some of the family was out of church. And uh, so in, in that respect, I had to make a choice as just a young girl to go myself right. and, not, and, and not miss church. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, you didn't play ball on, on uh, Wednesday nights. You, you didn't. And there was a period of time where I played ball with my cousins and I was leaving the Sunday service a little bit early and God started dealing with me about that. Stop that. I, I, I was able to get by with it for a while. You know, I was still young in the Lord, but he started dealing with me. That's a bad example. You're leaving early. You're missing out. And that affects the service. What happened? What would happen if we all decided to leave early? Because we had to go to a ball game. And then pastors here is like, where did everybody go? Oh, they all went to the ball game. Okay, well, let, let that umpire come and lay hands on you when you need it. Let that... I'm just saying. But, but we all, you know, Pastor Debbie, no, I'm just, uh, praise the Lord. Well, let's, let's read the word. Let's, let's let that talk to us, okay? So in verse 14, pursue peace with all people in holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. You see, because people can start out living for the kingdom of God and be very excited about the things of God and just really put them, you know, get involved in helps ministry and getting people saved and praise the Lord. And then what happens? We can allow ourselves to get burnt out. And, you know, I just need to stay home, watch Highway to Heaven tonight, you know, or whatever. I I just need to stay home, watch a movie or something like that. Well, spiritually speaking, that's not going to help you. It's going to minister to your flesh a while, and, and, but after a while, you're going to notice that spiritually, you're not growing. <laughs> so we have to remind you, you know, Dr. Dufresne used to uh, warn us about not getting bored. In the ministry, don't get bored. Now, we just came back from California, and it's beautiful in California, and, and uh, we stayed at... Uh, uh, a resort card called the Carter Resort, and there's a nice pool area, and and this, and I told Teresa, I said, now you you know you had the memorial service last week, and this, uh, use the pool. I, I don't think she did. She's like on the phone all day, you know, taking care of business and stuff. And I'm like, vacate for a couple of days, take some time off, you know, come to the school, help me, whatever, because that's what you're there for. But but use the pool. I don't think you ever did use the pool, did you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't either. I, I didn't. E- I basically stayed in my room. You know, we we were fellowshipping. We we uh, I taught the classes, and we were fellowshipping after that. Uh, there, at the school wonderful fellowship with Dean Graves and his wife. They've been longtime friends of ours, Miss Janine, and him, longtime friends, and we got to fellowship with them. That was wonderful. And and then sometimes we had to make some errands and got back. And basically, I'm I'm getting ready for the next day and praying in the spirit and getting ready and and what have you. And you know, sometimes you got to take care of some natural things or whatever. Uh, but I didn't make it to the pool. <laughs> And, and on the last day, uh, on Thursday, I told Teresa, I said, we're going to schedule some, some massages, and, and that's what we did. And, and, and uh, I took her out to eat, just because, you know, but that wasn't until Thursday. And I, I, I'm just saying, I don't go there to play. <laughs> that's, and I'm about king of business. And there's nothing wrong with going to a resort and using the pool and, and that type of stuff. But at the same time, when you're there for a purpose, that's what you have to per- put first, right? And that's what we were putting first. So it's important that we don't get bored with the things of God. Dad Hagen used to say, you know, you sit in your, in your I don't know the exact words he said it, but uh, he basically was saying, sometimes I just wanted to smash the window for some excitement in the hotel room. <laughs> You understand? <laughs> uh, I understand that. Sometimes you're, you're praying in the Holy Ghost and your flesh is like, I want to go to the pool. <laughs> Would you just get over this and go to the pool? God will help you tomorrow. <laughs> and you got to get through that. Now, let's back up a little bit even before that. Like, 
a week or, you know, actually a couple months before the meeting, they asked me to come teach. And we, we have a pretty full schedule of it, and there's a lot going on and what have you. And my flesh didn't want to go. But did I ask my flesh? No, because I'm putting ministry first. And I said, you, you know, to Christine, you let Brother Joel know that I would be honored to come. Praise the Lord. And it, well, you got to put money out, and you got to do this, and you got to fly. And it, well, praise the Lord. We're rejoicing in all of those things. But I tell you what, your flesh doesn't necessarily want to do it. It wants to stay home and sit on that back porch and watch the deer and the antelope play, okay? And, you know, throw some pizza and soda in there and we're all good. So, but anyway, so you, you don't want to get bored in your Christian walk. And when we're looking for things to fill the passion of our heart, then we're going to get off. Because the only thing that can fill our heart's needs is following God's will for our life and putting the kingdom of God first. And making, you know, you need to get rest. You can't pray for people 24 7. I mean, some people act like they've got to pray all day and save the world, okay? I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I've talked to people like, I've got a burden to pray. I'm like, all right then, why don't you go pray on your own time, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I pray, but it's, I'm not going to get anxious about it, and it's not, uh, well, anyway, movement, that's all good. That's all right. <laughs> Back to verse 14. <laughs> Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Now we can get bored. We can stop putting the kingdom first. We can stop looking at uh, the fact that Jesus gave his life for us. And if we give everything back to him, then then we are going to be putting the kingdom of God first. Amen. There's something I want to read here. This was in the Divine Healing and Health book. When we have hearts to give, it's in the love chapter, when we have hearts to give our entire lives and resources to unconditionally, unreservedly serve God and his kingdom, then we empty ourselves. Of all the self-promotion and all the carnal desires, we lay down offenses and quickly yield ourselves to using the love of God within. We express our faith by consecrating or separating our lives. Consecrate means to separate. Uh, by consecrating or separating our lives, our plans and fleshly desires, and sharing the love of Jesus wholeheartedly, serving those in the world around us. And we know that we're supposed to serve those in the body of Christ first. Yeah. Amen? Yes. We know that. So we, we, we got to watch that getting bored. Yeah. I don't want to go to church on Wednesday night and sit on side. It's, it's nice out. I understand that. But you're edifying your spirit man. You're learning things that will help you so that when God deals with you to minister to so-and-so, you're going to have the strength it takes. You're going to have the words to, to speak and help Amen. that person. Amen. Amen. Remember uh, when, well, we won't go there. I'm going to move on here. Okay. So remember that we also, well, let me, I've got about three different things I'm thinking about. We'll, we'll read the rest of that, and then, then we'll bring some points together. All right. So we're, we're to pursue peace, so on and so forth. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. See, we can fall short of the grace of God or God's grace not working for us, remember? You don't have the right key to get in there for that grace, that righteousness inside to benefit you. Why not? Lest any root of bitterness spring up cause trouble. So when we're not walking in love with those in our family, in our local church... Our, our, our work. Now, we're talking about even non-Christians. 
Now, I'm not saying that you're, you're to compromise, but at the same time, you're going to have to watch your attitudes. You're going to have to watch the way that y- you respond to things, right? And, and just sometimes we have to keep our mouths shut. We, we Just be an example. We don't have to be right about everything. It's kind of like I worked at a restaurant for several years, and the boss told us, the customer's always right. Don't try to prove that you're right about things. Well, first of all, it affects your tips. I never, do, I never could understand that. Why does, why does the waitress or uh, the whatever want to be right about everything, and then nobody leaves you a tip anyway? Well, just saying. All right. But we don't want to be right about everything because we love people. And we don't have to, you know, for instance, somebody, uh, my, my steak was not cooked right. Well, I know they cooked it right. I, I, you know, I watched them. Well, that's real loving, isn't it? Why don't you just take the steak and say, sure, I'll, I'll go check it out. Now, there are some people uh, that will come and everything's wrong. But I just learned to, it's like, oh, okay, sure, I'll check on that. Sure, no problem. Sure. And sometimes I had to tell him, uh, you know, sir, the manager's coming. I, I, I do have to take care of this table over here. But I didn't stand there and get in a fist fight with, yeah. the, with the customers. The customer's always right. Let the manager deal with it. And if they have to kick them out, go for it, okay? <laughs> Doesn't have to be for me. So sometimes we take it on ourselves, like we have to be the great corrector in the church, and we no, just love people, just be a blessing. And if you're, if you know, people are at all different levels. People come to me, it's like, did you know what so and so did? Like Dad Hagen, he he was out of town. He and Miss Aretha, I've been listening to uh, his love, the way to victory. They were out of town, and this they had taken the new pastorate of a church, and this lady came to him and and proceeded to talk about this lady and every everything she did to, to her. And, and Dad Hagen finally stopped her and said, you know, because it sounded like this is something that just happened last week, yeah, right? right? And this lady said, oh, oh, oh no, no, this, this happened like eight years ago. <laughs> and Dad Hagen's like, what? You're still hanging on to that? He said, but, but she said, but I've forgiven. But I haven't forgotten what that old dog did to me. I'm... Something wrong with that picture. And I think you all understand that, so we'll move on. Okay. Paul said, you know, I really shouldn't have to teach on love, but, but I'm going to anyway because obviously you need it. That's my paraphrase. All right, verse, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Now, I wrote something down there about that. This could be an example of what Christians do today. They sell out to the devil because of the lust for the things of this world. We must stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might by feeding on the word and speaking and acting. Then we renew our minds and develop our hearts. When we sell out to the desire of our flesh for worldly things, we are selling out our ability to assuredly walk in our rights and privileges in Christ. We sell out our God-given birthright to all his promises because of feeding a desire for other things. So that's what Esau did. He fed a desire for other things, other than the uh, things of God. And we know his brother, was it Jacob, uh, he stayed close to the base. And, and the things of God were precious to him. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, Esau, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Now bear with me here, because many times as I'm studying, I'll write out notes, and, I, and, and when I write it out, I just sometimes, I like to read it to y'all, so do you mind? Just bear with me here. He could not turn back time and change the fact that he gave his birth right away. He just didn't like the consequences. He sought God for the consequences to change, but there is no indication of a change of heart. We can tear up, but true repentance starts in the heart, not an outward, an outward show of sorrow because we were caught. We need an inward change of humility, which, with actions, leads to an outward show and a set 
and a set change of mind according to God's word and spirit. We can have a mental assent to the word and still be led by an evil conscience because we are spiritually weak, undeveloped, and have calloused hearts. We can say one thing to avoid the consequence and even act right for a period, but then our heart isn't in it. Eventually, the wrong actions because of the wrong heart motives will follow and we will be in worse spiritual condition than before. Okay, I know we're getting deep here, but it's all good. I mean, it might be tight, but what do we say? It's right. And we can also start out with repentant hearts Listen to this. We can start out with repentant hearts, but if we don't quickly renew our minds by putting our faith and actions into place, then we will go back to yielding to the same carnal actions as before. And that's why we can, if we're looking back, and if we're looking around us at distractions, that's how we can even, you know, you go to the, you're on the front row of the church, but then you're in the middle and then yeah. the back, and eventually you're out the door. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we address don't be going places every single weekend or be out for long periods of time because God, he said, don't forsake the assembly together of the believers. Now, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not aiming at anybody. I'm not trying to correct you if you're dealing with symptoms. I mean, I've stayed home before when I dealt with symptoms. We've been on vacation before. We didn't, we didn't call around town to see where we could go to church. We just stayed back at the cabin and, you know, enjoyed our salvation. And that's okay. It, it, we don't have to get religious about this. But it's a consistency that will either spiral in the right way when we are spiritually strong in the Lord and the power of his might because we're renewing our mind, developing our heart, because we're putting God first, we're putting the local church first, we're walking in love with those around us, we're living an orderly life spiritually, and then that helps us in the natural things. God gives us wisdom and light. And if we fall, what do we do? Get back up. Get back up. Amen. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, so let's go on here. So we, we can also start out with repentant hearts, but if we don't quickly renew our minds by putting our faith and actions into place, then we will go back to yielding to the same carnal actions as before. It is the renewing of the mind and the inward development of the heart that will help us to be strong in saying no to sin. No to our flesh. No, I'm not staying home tonight. I'm going to the local church. No, I'm not going to talk that way to my husband. No, I'm not going to talk that way to my friends. No, I'm not going to be a bad example to those I work with. They already have enough to contend with. They don't need me pulling them down when I should be pulling them up. And at the same time, I'm not always the one that needs to be pulling them up. Sometimes I need to be uh, ministering to them from a distance <laughs> so that they're not pulling me down. But I'm to be an example. So we learn to say no. As pastors, we are not going to placate to those who will not grow up and take their training and correction like a wise child who wants to learn and become a blessing to the kingdom of God. Yes, I wrote all this down. Over a period of time, I kept adding to it. <laughs> Just off that one scripture for he found no place for repentance. <laughs> if you have not been faithful, if you have allowed offense in, or if you have said things you, you shouldn't about us or leadership, who, who are your brothers and sisters in Christ? Then just take the correction and make the turns. Sometimes we just need to make small tweaks here and there. Sometimes we need to make bigger changes. Also, respect when we make decisions to use someone else and not you for a position. Now, I'm not, I'm not uh, vying for anybody. I'm not aiming my spiritual gun at anybody. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying that this is what I wrote out. Yes, Don't question and ill-esteem our decisions. Yes, just do the best you know how to do in your spiritual life or in your departments of helps ministry. Don't ever compare yourselves with someone else and, and, and allow jealousy in. Be full of joy. Know who you are in Christ. Walk above offense. 
and have a heart and actions to bless the kingdom of God in all you do. Now, let me give you something, and you don't have to talk, you don't even have to share with somebody else that you were jealous of them. It, does, it is not edifying to anybody else for you to come up to them and say, I've been jealous of you. First of all, now they don't trust you, and they shouldn't. And then, and then <laughs> I'm, I'm just being serious. And, and second, it's inappropriate. Because then they have to deal with well, what I do wrong. Like somebody walked up to me and said, well, I saw you do something. And, you know, it, it really threw me off. I'm like, well, what did I do? Excuse me. And I found out, I guess I was speeding or something like that. Well, I'm sorry. You don't pray for me. Excuse me. I mean, you know, I thought I killed somebody at Walmart or something. Thought I knocked someone off and it really offended you. I mean, I don't know, but people come up and... Now, I'm not saying speeding is the right thing. And I told them, I'm, I'm very sorry about that. You know, pray for me, okay? I'm, <laughs> praise the Lord. Pray for my husband too. and Pray for us all. But, you know, we're... We're, we're growing. It's... And, and I've had to make some changes along that line. But if there's a period that that change isn't manifesting, I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> All right? Moving right along. Never be an advocate for the devil and his kingdom by wrongly speaking against and judging your pastors, your local church and your brothers. Did I already read that? Yeah, well, that was good anyway. All right, so let's humble ourselves. Let's humble ourselves. Take correction like good soldiers of Christ. Yes. Love others before ourselves and faithfully follow the scriptures to hear and do for the glory of our Father God and the benefit of his kingdom that lives within us. Let's be all about pushing past laxness and fervently loving and helping our brothers and sisters in Christ, especially in the house of God or the local church. And let's be about getting people saved, filled, blessed, and healed by our help and example. Sometimes we think that we do have to tell people everything, but, but honestly, is it okay if I say this? Um, sometimes we just need to talk a whole lot less. We don't want to hear everything that you've been thinking wrongly about us, okay? You don't need to come up and, and apologize to Pastor Jay. I thought this about you. I thought this about you. I was in agreement. I was in agreement with this. I was in agreement with the other. Well, uh, did you go to the Lord about it? Did you, did you? See, the thing is, we don't need to spout off everything that comes to us. You just need to choose to say, no, I'm not going there. Uh, sure, I have thoughts come to me, but I said, I don't have an opinion about that. I answer it. I have no opinion about that. And then I just, if I truly disagree on a scriptural principle with somebody, I will pray for them and ask God to lead them to what's right. And if I'm missing it, show me. Okay? And then I move on. Now, if it's in our local church and it's something that we have to correct, we'll do it. But I'm not going around correcting everybody else's church, and I'm certainly not going to be correcting my pastor. Okay? Okay? I will pray for them, but not God show them how I do it. All right? That, that, that's just not the right way, okay? Lord, help them to live like me. <laughs> Something wrong with that picture. I'm trying to help, okay? So we, we talked about Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge I also will reject you from being priests for me because you have forgotten the law of your God I will also forget your children and we said what you don't know can destroy you what you don't know can destroy you but we also said uh, and what you do know can destroy you if you choose not to use it or walk in the light of it so you can know something but you're still, the devil's still getting in and he's still causing destruction. It's not really, it, it, it's not the action that's causing destruction. It's you allowing the door to be open and the devil coming. Okay? 
So people have a choice. If I say the wrong thing, they have a choice not to accept it or not. But many times the door can get open to the devil and he can get in the middle of that. And we, don't want to, we don't want to give a place to him. So we know we have a healing covenant. Just like Exodus, we backed up a little bit, Exodus 15, 26, he said, God said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases, or what do we say? That means allow. I will allow none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians for I am the Lord who heals you, or which I have allowed on the Egyptians for I am the Lord who heals you. So we know that we are righteous in this new era in Christ. We're reading from the Old Testament there, but it's the same principle. And we have a healing covenant. Jesus paid the price. He became our eternal sacrifice. You know, his blood was shed that we might have life. Amen? So with that, our righteous heart will do nothing to help us if we are not assured and using our faith to bring the blessings of our righteousness to us. Unlock the door. Walk in. Take hold of your healing. Take hold of the blessing of God. Take hold of it. But understand something. Let's believe, let's be assured, and let's walk in love. Let's watch the words of our mouth. Let's love our Heavenly Father so that if He's really dealing with us to make changes or tweaks in areas, then we will follow that. Understanding that He has brought us this far and He has not expected us to be perfect in everything. He has expected us to walk toward perfection. He has expected us to walk toward it and make the tweaks and the changes, to be in the house of God, to become skilled by renewing our mind with God's word. And then we're supposed to use these things at home. That is a novel idea. Let's take it home. Let's put it on at home. Let's practice it with our children. Let's be the parent and tell them this is not going to fly in the house because when we get out of order and you don't follow house rules, problems set in. And in the local church, we've got to remind people that things do have to be orderly. We have to remind people because it can affect your health and healing. It can affect the blessing. It can affect the growth of other people in the body. And we've got to watch out for why? Because we love you and we care about you. That's why we would bring correction on things because we want healing to readily flow in this house. Amen? Why don't you stand up? Pontele ko oche e le mo o shai Ako ishan kitai perasoko tand ete eshi rosongaya. So we don't placate in our heart and passively say, oh yeah, I, I can do that. No, no, no. We've got to come in the presence and respect and honor the word and choose to do it. Pandi uche e ku uma asike e de debresokuta. Honor the word. Honor the things of the spirit. Honor the local church. Honor the ministers that I've put in the local church. In any mera soku and see how the blessing of God will change your home and change your life because you're putting to practice and you're keeping in order. Pashtete. Order. Pashtete. Order pastete. And then imasuku ushende de bresso kuta ea shekita. So rejoice. Be glad. Kill the fatted calf. Know that you are the healed of the Lord and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But be right in your heart. Be right in your actions. Don't draw others away. Make a choice to be right this very day. And then a masiki de de bresoku shende le bo shakati ita mandede shekita pashtete. Father, I know that we've all missed it. 
I've missed it. But I come to you in Jesus' name. And I've, I've, I've pled the blood of Jesus. And you've heard me every time. And I thank you, Father. And I come before you. And I ask you for this congregation. For your mercy. For your light. For your understanding. So that we can walk in your best in this family. So that we can be a blessing so that we can go forward and be soldiers of Christ, healthy, whole, strong, be examples, not hiding away from the things of God, but out in the open, openly living the example. We thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands to him. And I'm forgiven Because I know he was forsaken And I'm accepted He was condemned I'm alive and well His spirit lives within me and I thank you Lord Jesus why don't you come up there and sing that thank you Lord Jesus we worship you I didn't get near what I wanted to get to but, but I think we got across what we needed for now and I, I think the biggest thing that we have to remember is there should be order in our lives spiritual order and it affects our natural order you need natural order I mean have you ever thought of it what if a news company you watch their news broadcast and the camera was always going this that way and then somebody said hold on I'm not ready yet and you know you just don't normally see that right no they're gonna they are doing things professional and sometimes we think in the church, you know, we can just get by with little excellence. But people need us to be orderly. First and foremost on the spiritual side of it, but, that, you know, we need to have a nice auditorium that people like to be in. We just order is good. God is a God of order. When we get to heaven, you're not, you got streets of gold, you got doors of diamonds. You're, you know, you're just not going to have uh, trash all around the streets. Amen. The 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 pearly gates aren't going to need to be fixed. All right, they're going to just open up and they're just be perfectly in sync. <laughs> so we just need to learn spiritually to put things first and put God first. And how do we do that? Well, according to 1 John 3, we are to believe. What affects our assurance? Believing, in other words, using our faith, walking in love. So let's look at what we need to do to be orderly. To put God first, because we're not, loving, we're not walking in love with God, we're not putting him first. We're not walking in love with God when, when we're continually saying, no, Lord, I want to hear that. And too many times we just fly off the handle and say anything we want on our Facebook pages, on whatever, just everything. Well, Pastor Debbie, maybe I'm not perfect like you. We are all able to do this. All of us. And first of all, we got to watch our mouth and not just let it fly off the handle and just say whatever. Have you ever driven down the road with somebody and you're just enjoying the... Uh, you know, the wheat fields and, and things like that. And then they're just always, they're talking 24-7. I wonder how they make the wheat. I wonder if it's going to rain today. I wonder if this, I'm like, I feel like saying, shut up. Be quiet. Listen. <laughs> just listen. Listen to the silence. <laughs> I've, I've come a long ways. And my, my husband would say, hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes we just need to learn to stop talking so much. Because in the multitude of words is sin. Proverbs. Amen? Let's sing that.
I'm forgiven Because you were forsaken I'm accepted again. Amazing love, amazing love, how can it be? You, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, hope you were helped tonight. I just really flowed out of my heart more than anything, so I, I think that gives us something to chew on. And as you go home, just thank God that you're healed and whole. And don't let the devil come and get on your shoulder and tell you everything you've done wrong. You tell him to shut up. Now, if there's somebody you've got to say, I'm sorry to, just do it. But if it's just, be, if it's just what the devil's saying to you, you just tell him to shut up. And you don't have to repeat that to, to everybody. Right. Well, I, I was thinking about this today. I really don't know what, I, I don't want to know, okay? I don't want to know what the devil was telling you today. I got enough stuff that he tells me, and I don't need yours, and then everybody else is on top of that, because then I'd be stark raving mad, okay? <laughs> All right.